Welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast from Discovery Park of America in Union City, Tennessee. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Real Foot Lake. Thank you very much, Zach, and welcome to Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast where together we explore the history, the people, and the culture of our home here in West Tennessee. I'm your host, Scott Williams. Okay, Zach, as usual, before I introduce today's guest, what is something you have discovered this week at Discovery Park of America? I've been here for six months now. I'm kind of ashamed to admit that I just now discovered the Japanese garden that we have here, Uh, but I find it very peaceful and may have to sneak away from the office to work from there sometimes. I was thinking about having my 60th birthday party there, but I ended up not having a party so because, you know, I didn't have time. But if I had of, that's where I would have done it. Um, I'm trying to talk my one of my daughters into getting married there. I think it is a very peaceful place, and the Koi um, are really neat. Let's get to our special guest. I'm very excited because we're going to cover a lot of topics today that are near and dear to my heart. Our guest today is Jenny Veal, Rural Destination Development Manager for the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. We have a lot of cool stuff to talk about, especially bikes, which is uh, near and dear to my heart. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you, Scott. So you and I have been uh, in a lot of similar things. Looking at your Facebook page is a lot like looking at my Facebook page. So um, we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. But before we dive into all of that, back me up and tell me where you're from and where you grew up, that kind of thing. Okay. So my family is originally from New England, so from Connecticut and Massachusetts. And we lived up there until I was in middle school and then moved around the country quite a bit, but ended up in Tennessee um, in high school. And so the South is home and I've been here a long time, married a Southern boy from Chattanooga. So it's home and I love it. Wouldn't go anywhere else. And so we had talked earlier um, about you driving into the mountains and uh, how much you enjoy those in Tennessee. For those who are listening who haven't ever been uh, to Tennessee, it's a very strange state in that, you know, it's three very distinct divisions, and and I would argue four. If you separate West Tennessee into Memphis and the rest of the rural part of West Tennessee, and you've got Middle Tennessee, which, you know, is Nashville, and it's a lot of outdoors, but then East Tennessee is very outdoors and mountainous, and uh, do you take advantage of those mountains? I do. Yeah. Um, And, you know, it's been interesting to me. I live outside of Chattanooga in Sequatchie County and have been there um, since our daughters were young. So about 18 years. So I know Southeast Tennessee very well and love the whole eastern part of the state. But as a part of my work, I've been able to travel and learn about the, you know, the entire state. And we work with our at risk and distressed counties across the state. And I've fallen in love with the whole state. It's all very different, the geography, but I love West Tennessee. I love the Mississippi Flyway and um, I'm really intrigued with the Mississippi River. So um, we, it is a very diverse, geographically diverse state, but um, I think each region has its own attributes that are really special. But yeah, East Tennessee is fun. The mountains are unbelievable. I love going up into you know, the Northeast Tennessee. And we went up to Roan Mountain State Park not too long ago. And you kind of, you can walk on a portion of the Appalachian Trail. And that was kind of fun. So Discovery Park was just added as one of the interpretive centers on the Great River Road, which is the Mississippi River Trail that, you know, 10 states have all contributed to anyway. So, so that's kind of a fun thing. It's coming up. It is. And one of the interesting things I learned about the Mississippi River is there's pretty limited access to it. Um, I was at Fort Pillow State Park recently talking with the park ranger and just trying to understand how can I go see the river? And he was like, well, it's pretty limited. You can go to this overlook and it's way off in the distance. So I think that's been interesting that it's hard to like get to the river to see it. But it's such an important river to our entire country, but certainly to Tennessee and the history of that river is I always think of Mark Twain and want to know about the old river boats and all the history of that river. So I'm glad y'all are interpreting that history. 
Yeah, the next time you are here in this part of the country, you need to go visit Hickman, Kentucky, which is very near here if you haven't yet. Um, it's an older town, and uh, Mark Twain actually was there in Hickman for a while, and uh, you can see the river, and uh, it's a really interesting little town that you might enjoy checking out. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your career path. Where did you go to college and what did you major in? So I went to UT Knoxville and I have a daughter there now. So um, I'm a vol mom now and studied communications. Um, originally, I was really into geology and geography and I thought I was going to get a degree in one of those areas, but took some journalism classes and we were talking about like writing a lot about conservation at the time. And I just got sucked right in and um, worked at the Daily Beacon newspaper. I got to work as a, I was a staff writer, but then also served as a managing editor there and fell in love with writing. Not as much journalism. Um, I have worked, I did work for the Daily, ba uh, the Nashville Banner for about a year and a half, but um, I really loved freelance writing and writing about conservation topics and outdoor family travel topics kind of early on in my career. And so um, you would travel around and then write about your experiences? Yeah, well, I, I got to that point. Um, there was a, I did work in marketing right out of school. I um, worked for actually a television station as a weekend assignment editor. And I decided really quickly I did not want to work in television and then worked in marketing and advertising for a while. Um, and then my favorite, one of my favorite jobs was I worked um, in marketing for the Chattanooga Nature Center. And that's an environmental education center at, that was located on an arboretum outside of Chattanooga and ended up being the executive director there and was there for about five years. But then when I had my daughters, um, I stayed home with them and so glad that I was able to do that. And but I wrote um, I started writing freelance more than when they were young. And so um, I had started a blog when blogs were starting. Um, and was that's when I started doing more like traveling and writing. We got to go on a couple family media trips, and that was really fun. Um, but just trying to promote outdoor family travel. So yeah, it was all within the United States, mostly the Southeast. Now, at what point did you start actually working for the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development? So I had worked in um, tourism. I started working in tourism regionally. So I was a regional director in Southeast Tennessee, working with the Southeast Tennessee De Development District. Did that for about eight years. And then I had planned on leaving and starting and consulting and starting my own podcast, a cultural heritage travel podcast. But then a position came open with the state tourism office doing rural destination development, which is what I do today. And I just couldn't turn it down. I love the team. I love Commissioner Rizal and his uh, mission of serving rural communities. It was just a dream, dream job. So I've been there for about a year and a half now. And so for folks who are listening, who don't, who are not like you and I, in the business of getting people to visit uh, communities and attractions and, you know, what, what exactly does a state department of tourist development do? Well, all kinds of amazing things. We have a big team um, and we have a marketing team and a communications team that really do all of, the, of that marketing of the state. And they're incredible. So, you know, you, the website, tnvacation.com, it houses, you know, all of the projects that they're working it on and all of the, the things that people can see and do in Tennessee. So that's our industry website. So we are just promoting all the fun things there are to do across the state. Now, I work with the outreach team, which is more that, you know, industry facing. So we are out, all of us um, working with our partners whether that's our, you know, large partners and the cities and towns, um, the Nashville, Memphis, Chattanooga. But then um, I work with our rural communities along with another gentleman, Silas Stoddart. Um, we are focused on our at-risk and distressed communities and going in and just talking with them about their needs and kind of what they have in tourism, I mean, our rural areas are amazing, as you know. I mean, that's where all the outdoor recreation is happening. Um, a lot of our small historic towns, like when you think of 
Jonesboro and Elizabethton, uh, Linden out in your area. You know, we have so many small historic towns. And so, so many of our communities are just working really hard to build their downtowns, bring in restaurants and businesses and lodging to support all the things that people are doing when they come to our rural areas. So getting out on the rivers and hiking, OHV is really growing, agritourism, you know, going to visit farms and having experiences on those farms. So that's kind of what we do in rural tourism as a part of an outreach team that um, is working with communities across the state. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge for those of us that are working in the attractions in rural communities? Um, what challenges do you find that you're having to try to solve? One of the biggest challenges, because there are, there are lots of challenges, um, lots of opportunities as well, but um, a lot of times our communities don't have a staff person who um, is devoted entirely to tourism. So, you know, in our bigger cities, you have entire teams of people that that's their job. So someone might be doing or multiple people might be doing the social media piece or the advertising piece or working with partners. I know in a lot of small towns, the person who's assigned you're supposed to be working in tourism is also doing a lot of uh, economic development and trying to, you know, serve many masters. And so that makes it. Yes, as well. exactly. They wear a lot of hats. Um, sometimes it's through a chamber of commerce. So they have those chamber responsibilities as well. So that's probably one of the biggest challenges. Anyone that is designated to do tourism is generally doing a lot of different things. Um, there are counties that don't have a tourism person at all. So it's um, an, a challenge as well. So I would say that's number one. Number two is funding. Um, you know, everything costs money in the marketing world. So managing a website is not cheap or paying someone to manage it for you or social media. So I think that, you know, the funding has been a challenge, but that's one of the things that I'm so proud of our department and the ways that we're able to provide funding assistance to our all of our tourism partners through tourism enhancement grants and tourism marketing grants. So we, we try to assist with some of those needs, but tourism marketing can be expensive, as you know. Um, share with me as somebody like, of course, I'm obviously very interested in rural tourism. Explain for people who are not from our state, the way that some of the counties are determined to be at risk. There's different levels. So talk to us a little bit about that. So we work with what is people are, are typically or counties are typically known as distressed and at risk counties. And the way I like to just kind of describe that easily, it's just the economic status of a county. And so it looks at a lot of different factors within a county, um, you know, job rate, lots of different things that impact economic impact of that county. So we're focused on the, you know, most in need economically. So distressed is kind of the hardest hit. No one likes being called distressed. Um, it's not the greatest term, but um, it does bring with it assistance from the state and some um, lower grant match availability. Um, so it's we've had some funny conversations about that. No one wants to be called distressed, but there are benefits to being in that category sometimes when it comes to tourism. And Discovery Park is in an is in an uh, at risk, and then we're connected. Lake County butts up to us, and Lake County is distressed. So, you know, to me, it's like nothing to be ashamed of. It's like that's hey, that's how we're going to get out of that, you know. And so, right, um, you know, and actually, O'Brien has moved out of their at risk status, according to the recent figures. So I think y'all are considered transitional now. So that's oh, a good thing. Yeah. And I think you nice. all have played a big role in that. Lake County is still uh, distressed. Um, so we're, we're looking forward to working with them more. The new head of schools in Lake County, head administrator, um, is very interested in using Discovery Park as part of their tourism program to help young people learn more about the hospitality business to try to help get them jobs, you know, you know, whether they go to college or not, you know, hospitality is a good option for them. So 
It is. I mean, tourism is for Tennessee, it's the second biggest industry in the state. And in most states across the country, I've heard that it's in the top three biggest industries. So there's definitely lots of job opportunities anywhere you would go in the country, but certainly in Tennessee. So that training workforce development component is really important. And it's great to see our universities and community colleges really focusing on that. You mentioned Mark Azell a while ago. I think it's really helpful for us that he really he really takes the approach to tourism that he's talking about economic development. And of course he says tourism is real money is his, is his saying. And, you know, I think a lot of times it's hard for people to, to really grasp that for some reason. And, you know, that it is a great way to generate, you know, a lot of economic opportunities um, in a, in a, in a county, whether it's distressed at risk or doing fantastic, you can always use with a little bit more economic uh, development. So, oh, definitely, uh, definitely, because tourists, um, when they come and visit, they're paying sales tax. And then if they stay overnight, they're paying occupancy tax. So um, there's lots of ways that tourists bring money into the communities. And then they're not staying there. So we don't have to teach their children or Hopefully, um, you know, they're not using the hospitals or the police departments and jails. And so um, they leave that money behind for the communities. Yeah. And like if you do like me and you speed through Dyer County, you leave behind even more money when you get pulled over and get a ticket. So um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, surely I not. I know. Surely right? not. We're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, we're going to talk all about bikes. Real Foot Lake is a natural wonder. Famous for its bald cypress trees, nesting bald eagles, and waterfowl of all kinds. From Real Foot Lake State Park to Lake Isom National Wildlife Refuge, a visit to the area provides a whole world of nature to discover. You'll find year-round hunting, fishing, bird watching, canoeing, kayaking, hiking, and more. To plan your experience, visit realfoottourism.com. Okay, welcome back. I'm with Jenny Veal, the Rural Destination Development Manager for Tennessee Department of Tourist Development. Jenny, we uh, have talked all about tourism and rural communities, and, and I'm really, really excited to talk about the new bike program in Tennessee. First question is, are they going to take that logo and make a t-shirt out of it? Oh, of course. Yes. I, I love that logo. It's, you know, the state yeah. of Tennessee and the bicycle and the helmet and everything. It's a great, it's a great logo. Well, thanks. Have you seen the animated version of the logo? No, I have not. It, it takes over a room. We were sharing it recently at a meeting and the whole room was like, oh, talking about it. We finally said, OK, we got to get over the logo now. We got to move on. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, there's an animated version that's really cute. It'll be on the website when it launches. Well, I'm ready to buy a T-shirt whenever they're for sale. You just let me know. Well, I will get you one. So, thank you. yeah, we're excited. Um, Bike Tennessee is a road cycling initiative. Um, that we have been working on. It's still in the development stages, but will launch in the spring of 2024. What we're doing is having the nine regions of the state mapped for road cycling. We are working with a gentleman out of Chattanooga, Shannon Burke with Veloview Bike Tours, and he has been um, providing through his business high-end road cycling tours for years. And um, he actually was doing a lot out West, but his family is from Sevier County area and he and his wife wanted to move back. And he has just found Tennessee to be a beautiful place for riding and has said, you know, to many people that it's as good or maybe better than even the West. So he has kind of been our, our mapping guru um, to look at road cycling routes across the state. We're looking at them by region. So there's like nine regions of the state that he'll be mapping. Um, initially, we'll have between six to eight routes per region. But um, he's really good at curating routes because we we want these to be as safe as possible. Um, you know, you, when you get on a road, you're just, there's inherent risks with that. But being on rural roads you know, is different than being on state routes. And so he's looking at these regions to find those low uh, traffic roads that also have some towns nearby so people can visit. Um, all of the routes are loops. And so he's finding a place where someone can park and there would be restrooms and then they could leave from there and ride. Generally, like a he's mapping about 30 to 40 
mile routes that can be modified as well. Um, some of them are really challenging. Roan Mountain has a route that I will never do probably because the elevation is crazy. We're excited about it. There's really not any other states in the Southeast that are marketing cycling in the way that we're hoping to do. We've been looking at some states out West that do it really well. Oregon has a beautiful scenic bikeways program. So we're hoping to really capitalize on that. It's a, you know, huge industry, um, especially after COVID or during COVID people were buying bikes. You couldn't even buy a bike, hardly find them. So people were getting out more and riding. That's just, you know, continuing. And so we're, we're excited about bringing those folks into town or into Tennessee into our small towns and uh, rural areas. Well, of course. So when I moved here from Washington, D.C., I rode my bike a lot in D.C. because there were bike trails everywhere. Moving here, I really had to take advantage of, you know, riding way out in the country. And I was worried at first, like, was I going to get hit by a car? But it is remarkable how few cars are way out in the country when you're riding you know, oftentimes I would get up early in the morning and ride for an hour or so and never encounter another vehicle, you know, yeah. so it was, it was a very fun uh, routes out there. So I'll look forward to seeing the routes that he's picked for my area here in Obion County. And hopefully people will come visit Discovery Park with their bikes and take off and, and ride. It's uh, definitely a fun uh, area. I know there's a, there's a bike event ride the fault line or something like that that rides along uh the new madrid fault line every year so um hopefully they'll they'll uh, be part of they'll be able to ride part of this as well oh yeah definitely and um we'll, we will be promoting cycling events as well on the website and just kind of as a note on this one of the things that we're really stressing in the meetings that we're having in our communities about bike Tennessee, because we're going out to do community outreach meetings now and some partner pedals with our community partners to experience shortened versions of some of these routes. You know, bike Tennessee is really focused on cyclists who are comfortable riding on roads. So these are not routes that we would say, take your kids out on. These are for people who are comfortable riding on roads and kind of know how to go about that, the safety things that they need to be thinking about, the equipment that they need. So just as a note on that, it's it's not the family-friendly riding. This is your on-roads with cars. Um, but what we do hope is to expand the program to include mountain biking and gravel riding as well. So we're talking about that and how that might look. And we do include within the regions where we have the mapped routes, we'll include anything like rail trails, anything that would be uh, more family friendly. So if someone's on the website and wants to be off of a road and doing something on, um, I think of like the Tweetsie Trail in Carter County and Johnson City, you know, those types of things will be on the website as well. So we can head you know, get folks in that direction if they want to ride something that's not on a roadway. When do you think that the website will be up so people can check out their area of Tennessee to see the routes? So I expect it would be by um, May of 2024. I think we could be safe saying that. And at that point, we'll have most of the routes or the regions mapped, but we um, will be adding them over the summer as well. So the complete mapping of the state will be ready by um, late fall of 2024. But we wanted to get it up and running because we'll have about, I think, about six of the regions mapped for the spring. So we wanted to get out, get that out there to folks. And then people will be able to go to tnvacation.com to find a link to the routes, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. I'm super excited. As soon as I heard um, about this at our last uh, Tea and Vacation uh, Tennessee department, that's the hardest thing for me to remember to say. T and y'all say TD, TD is what you guys say, the inside yes. lingo. At the last yes. TD, TD uh, board meeting, they, they talked about this and I was super excited. And at the governor's conference, they talked a lot about it and I was uh, very excited about that. So um, anyway, I'm really looking forward uh, to riding the routes and reporting back. Um, it, I'm sure there'll be some folks out there that will ride all the routes throughout the whole state. Maybe you guys should do sort of a prize for the first person that rides all the That's routes. all of them. 
Yeah. yeah. Give, give them a new Trek bike or something. <laughs> we need to do that. Yeah. That's a good idea. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast. I really appreciate it. And I will, I'll um, look forward to you coming here to this neck of the woods and we'll, we'll uh, show you around Hickson, Kentucky. Great. Thank you.